And don't forget to take your wrench off. I've seen it way too many times. A lot of people use a ratchet. And the direction that they turn to use it, a ratchet goes into the to the sprag mode. So it just sits there and does it. But a call like this with a fan, whew, anything can happen, guys. Okay, so basically what I'm gonna do right now is okay, I'm gonna put my number one wire back on. And nice that I run the wire right across the fuel line. Gotta love that. There you go. Now we're gonna take my coil wire off that I grounded. I'm gonna put that back in there. I am gonna change this cap. I'm just not doing it today. Okay. And uh, this thing should be re ready to start. You always gotta start it warming up. And I'll give you those reasons. Uh, some cars get a vacuum advance. Vacuum advance is just ported vacuum on the on the carburetor. So that means when it's sitting in an idle. There is no vacuum or low pressure on ported. I'm moving the cover, I'm sorry. On ported vacuum. Okay, it's above the throttle plate. Then, as you open the throttle plate, it becomes vacuum. Okay, it goes into the. Let me put it to this way. When you open the throttle plate, the throttle plate passes by the, the port in the carburetor and allows vacuum to form there or low pressure. Okay, some cars don't do it like this. They run it to a temperature sensor first, which on this car, I don't think there's any that's visible, but I know on the block there's, there's like three of them. Okay, some cars, I know a lot of Fords run this right to manifold vacuum. So as soon as the car fires, the vacuum fans comes on. Gives you a smoother idle. Uh, and they do it for other reasons too, but... So, you gotta let the car start up, you gotta let it warm up before you make any adjustments. You don't want to do it on a fast idle because on a fast idle there's a very good chance you got vacuum to advance and the mechanical advance might start working which i can't show you on this um so let's fire it up and see what we got i don't even know what this thing's timed at whatever it is we're not touching it so let me fire it and see what we got well it's running it's almost warmed up you know that clackety sounds that's a little weed valve here in the end Sounds like a bunch of marbles floating around. But uh, I'm gonna hook up the final light to see what we got. Could warm up a little bit longer. Let's go see the roof shaking it. Yeah, the radiator really destroyed, so. No, it's a radiator, not a radiator. Okay, guys, I got the timer light working. I actually had a big connection inside here. Uh, I gave it a really quick uh, reattach. I don't have my solder on here, so it's gonna have to do. That's what the car is idling at out of gear. So four cycles. Two cycles half. When you put this on, it automatically gets you a It automatically starts off at 10 degrees. Back it down to zero. This is not changing the timing, guys. It's as slow as it goes. Let's see what the initial timing is. Morning, I'm at like 8 degrees, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I'm right. It's either 8 or 10 degrees. So I'm gonna bring this thing up to 8. There's 9.9. Nine. And I think we're a little bit higher than that. Climbing on this motor right now is 13.3 degrees. That's how you use this thing without having um, a degree balance. Okay, this does it for you. Now, let me pull up the vacuum advance seat that changes. No. 
still exactly the same. I didn't feel anything on the back of the bench anyway. So my initial timing on this car is 13.3 degrees. If I want to find out what my full timing is, on the maximum advance, um, what I could do is pick a number, say 40, and I'll slowly rev up the car. And my goal is to keep clicking this button until I'm on the zero mark, and I can look at my answer here. So for argument's sake, on my wagon, if I go 40 degrees, I'll bring this thing Set this thing to 40 degrees. Okay, I got the, the trigger lock, and I'll bring up my RPM so I don't have any more advance, which is mechanical only in that car. And I'll read right on the zero mark. But right now, I got the car down to uh, 36 degrees. You got you to take a little, uh, you got to take a little advance out when you run nitrous and full fuel, especially. So, cause compromise at 36 degrees. Four degrees is. A lot of horsepower I'm losing. So, but, um, okay. This is going to be almost impossible for me to film for you guys, but 50 degrees is the maximum advance of this engine with the vacuum, mechanical, and the engine not being under a load. Once I put this engine under a load, I'm going to lose my vacuum. So, I've done a lot of research over the years using the scan tool. And 50 degrees is nothing. I've seen them go as high as 56 degrees on an engine. Uh, but the second you touch the throttle, put any kind of load on it, it shoots right down. So, uh, this motor does run well. This, motor, this engine does not ping at all. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the vacuum vents off and see what my total mechanical advance is. That's what I'm getting with the initial advance. It would be say 13 something. And I guess I'm putting out, I don't know, let's say 12 degrees mechanical advance. And 25 degrees vacuum advance. That's not too far. You can understand everything they do on the distributed times too, so they'll, uh, they'll calibrate it to 12 degrees and then it's just time to like the, When you rev up the motor, you actually hit a motor hold, the motor holding back, the engine holding back. I just can't do that, put the vacuum hose on and do all that stuff, you know. But now I know everything's working, so on this one.